I feel like with all the dresses that I have previously made, they're either like really dressed up and like I have to wear to a certain occasion or out to dinner or something, or they're super casual and I feel like the beach. So I thought a wrap dress could be the perfect number to add to this little middle area. Hello and welcome back to the Essentials Club. If you're new around here, I am Maddie, and on this channel I am making my dream wardrobe one piece at a time and sharing what works for me. And if you want to follow along, I share all the steps so you can make your own cute garments as well. Today's DIY number is a wrap dress with these beautiful big puffy sleeves. We see that wrap front style drawn together with some tie strings. You can tie it in a few different ways. And I've gone for the shorter sleeve and the shorter length finish, but of course, if you prefer a longer length, that is all good because at each step I do share little tweaks you can make to make it better suit your body or your style. Surprisingly, I found this super simple to create and hopefully that comes across. If you want to follow along in making your own wrap dress, this is the essentials that you'll need to get crafty. First up, we'll need enough fabric to create these wrap dresses. I'll put the suggested amount of material that you'll need in the description box of this video. I think for the best fit, I would recommend a lightweight kind of material. Mine is a gingham linen. Just because if it's lightweight, then it will probably sit better on your body and also just have a nicer flow to it. Once you've got that, you'll then need some fabric scissors, some matching thread to your material, a measuring tape, some pins and a safety pin, something long and clean like a paintbrush or something similar, enough elastic to go around both of your arms for the bottom of the sleeves. I think mine ends up being about a three quarter inch wide elastic and then you'll need a shirt to reference, ideally something that fits you a bit looser otherwise if it is a tighter fit we can, we can always add seam allowance where need be and then lastly we'll need our trusty old sewing machine. For step one we're going to cut out the main front and back panels. We'll start by measuring the ideal length of the dress that we want to create. So grab your measuring tape and start from the top of your shoulder down to your ideal length. I went for like a mid thigh finish and then once you've found this you can add two inches again if you are unsure maybe add an extra couple of inches as you can always take this away whereas if you accidentally make it too short it is a bit harder to add length later. We're then also going to grab our reference shirt and just kind of put it on top of our front chest area to map out the front angle that we're going to create that goes from one shoulder down to our opposing waist area. So as you can see I just kind of laid on top fold it over until the point where I'm happy. I want mine to not be too low of a front dip just a nice amount where it feels comfortable for my style. So once you figured that out you can then grab a pin and pop that in place on the shirt just so you can keep that in mind where you're going to fold the shirt backwards. We'll then lay out our material and lay down the reference shirt on top of this and we'll offset it from the edges to allow for the amount of seam allowance that we'll be adding on. So if your shirt is quite a tighter fit I would recommend adding at least two inches to be safe for the outer edge seam allowances and whereas if it's quite a loose fit you can probably add about half an inch seam allowance. Just keep in mind that obviously a shirt fits our top half of our body. I did end up adding about two inches just because I know that my hips are quite wider than my top half so if you do want to measure your widest point and just double check that you are making this wide enough for that for the angle I ended up actually adding about one inch of seam allowance along there just because that will allow for a double hem that comes in later then to find where we will be cutting it down to just go back to that initial measurement that we found from our shoulder down to where we want the dress to finish and you can measure that from the top and that will be the bottom of your front dress section so you'll see you'll have like one kind of awkward half panel that goes across your chest and then just threw it over the top of me once again just to make sure it was kind of sitting where I wanted it to be. Keep in mind it will kind of be at a larger point now just because we will be hemming it later but I did notice that the curve wasn't dipping as far as I wanted it to and the shoulder was a little bit too wide so I made those quick adjustments just by removing those little sections and that was all looking good. So for the second front side I personally just used this first one as a template and if you particularly have good or bad sides of your material this is where you would make sure that you lay the material good sides facing. So align that you can then pin it in place so it is nice and secure. I personally like my front piece to have a little bit more of an angle so the first piece is nice and straight and will sit underneath and obviously keep me nice and protected so if there is wind it won't blow up and then the front piece I just fold it back a little bit further to create this nice angle so you can tell it is a wrap dress and it is kind of layered just a personal preference you can of course make them both straight as always there are ways to experiment with what suits your style best once I was happy with that I then just trimmed around this second piece and that meant I had my two front sides all ready to go for the back panel we essentially repeat the same process where we lay down the fabric and then we lay down our shirt on top of this just to mainly figure out the neckline and make sure that it is generally going to all flow. I did lay down my first panels on top just to make sure that the width of the shoulder area was going to match as well as the same height of the sleeves as I did cut my sleeves a little bit larger than what my shirt was. Again I just used my fabric chalk to map out all of the edges of this back panel and then I just trimmed it all out and that meant I had my back panel and my two front panels all ready to go. Next 
we're just going to join the front and the back panel so we will lay down one of the front panels onto the back panel with the good sides facing we will then just align that top shoulder edge and that side edge which is going to be the one of the side seams and we'll leave the rest of the edges untouched so pin that in place and sew down those two edges Then we'll just lay it back down, shift the first piece that we have sewn out of the way so we don't accidentally sew it over that, and lay down the second front piece onto the back with the good sides facing, and again align the top shoulder edge and that side edge, and we will sew down there once again. At this point, it is going to begin to look like a weird apron looking thing, so don't judge it yet. I promise it will come together but I do recommend just kind of like throw it on at this point just to double check that you are happy with kind of where it is generally sitting you know if you want to make any adjustments to the dip maybe make them now I was happy with the curve where it met the waist but I just wanted to dip a bit straighter from my neckline again keeping in mind that I will be creating a hem here so it will kind of reduce by about one inch or two centimeters so once I've mapped that out I then trimmed off that excess chest area and then to just help prep moving forward for the next step I would recommend going to the shoulder seams and the two sides seams and trimming off any of this excess seam allowance to a point where it is about half an inch or maybe one centimeter and then flattening these out and overlocking or zigzag stitching both of the edges separately just so that way it creates a nice finish and then helps set us up for the next steps so moving forward there are two ways that you can tackle this we are going to be hemming pretty much the neckline front chest crossover and also that one long side edge if you're familiar with bias binding and you prefer to use that especially around curved edges that is perfectly fine you can go around and add that to all of the edges otherwise if you're not familiar with that or if you don't prefer that you can go ahead like me and we'll just create a double folded hem all around these edges personally I like to start folding up just around the neck just because it is a weird curved edge and I kind of like to work at the hardest point first and then work away from there around this neck edge my hem ended up being quite small probably about a quarter of an inch for each fold just because again it is a curved area and it is kind of harder to fold along these sections so I did that quarter of an inch fold around there continued along that curve and you'll see that my fold start to get just a little bit larger and that is intentional so for most of that chest area I then went for about a half an inch to one centimeter double fold and then once I continued down the two edges of the garment I found I wanted that to be quite a larger hem just for aesthetic reasons and also because I did find it didn't really bother me if I took a bit of width of those edges so that they sat in a bit shorter so I hope that makes sense but essentially you are just doing a double hem around the two side edges the two crossover sections and the neckline if you find it's easier to fold this and sew this in sections go ahead and do that or if you're like me you can just go ahead and do it all at once figure out what feels best to you and then you should end up with some beautiful clean edges and a dress kind of coming together just obviously without the sleeves at this point garment and we're going to measure the height of the armhole area now again this comes down to personal preference if you just want a regular sleeve you can totally just measure this height and keep it at that and only add one inch of seam allowance otherwise if you're like me and you want to go for that more like balloon gathered up effect I ended up adding about five inches to the top of the sleeve and two inches at the bottom of the sleeve or if you want a bit more of a conservative gathered look maybe you only add about like two to three inches on top and one to two inches on the bottom once you figure that out map it all out mine ended up being about 17 inches high so I noted that down as the height of my sleeve when it is on the fold and then I grabbed my measuring tape again and measured from my shoulder down to where I wanted this sleeve to finish and I added four inches and that is enough seam allowance to attach it onto the garment and also create a tunnel later to add the elastic into so once you've got those two key measurements we're going to cut out two panels because we did measure the sleeve just on the front of the garment we will need to fold our fabric so this is called measuring on the fold because there is a fold at the 
top of this material so fold it to the height of that measurement that we found for the height of the sleeve so again mine was 17 inches for this and then I measured the length of my sleeves and plotted this out and cut out a rectangle to these key measurements then next I just grabbed my elastic and wrapped it around where my sleeve will finish and for me personally I don't want my elastic to be too tight so it was kind of a loose fit and then I added one inch of seam allowance as we will need that extra length to overlap it and sew it together so cut out two pieces to those measurements next lay down one of your sleeves so it is on the fold and we're just going to lay our armhole section over the top of this sleeve panel again you can see I've offset the top by that amount that I added and also that bottom seam allowance from here I grabbed my fabric chalk and just traced around the angle of that armhole and then use that first one as a template to cut out the second one and then it is time to start gathering up the sleeves so unfold these sections and we are just going to sew a line where the sleeve attaches onto the armhole about a quarter of an inch or one centimeter or pretty much as close as we can to this edge and just make sure when we sew this one line that we do not backstitch at the beginning or the end as we need the threads to be nice and loose so we can pull the gathered area you might want to switch your machine to a looser tension and a longer length of stitch just because that helps us when it comes to the pulling stage so next you'll notice there is two threads at the end and that is the bobbin thread and the top thread and we'll just grab one of these and begin to pull the material over the top of this thread as you can see it begins to help create this gathered effect once I felt like I'd gathered it up to the point I then just laid it up to the garment to make sure that it is still at the ideal height where it will fit on the sleeve and have enough seam allowance where I can join it underneath afterwards as a side note I totally understand that people might do sleeves differently but personally this is just what I found that works for me as always if you have different ways of doing things that is totally fine go ahead and do that once that height was all matched up I then just pushed it over so the majority of my sleeve material is now laying on top of my garment and the good sides are all facing and then just aligned the top shoulder edge of the sleeve and the top shoulder edge of the armhole pinned this in place first pinning around this hole it secures it there in place ready for when I jump into sewing again just make sure that there is at least half an inch of seam allowance at the bottom edge so that this can overlap and join up once that is all pinned and you are happy with the placement of that sleeve we'll then just start at the bottom seam edge and just sewing entirely around this section attaching the sleeve onto the garment I do find sometimes with the gathered effect you might need to kind of like even the spread out of it as you are going along the sewing or even if you get to points and realize that you have gathered it too much or not enough and make any changes as you go so keep that in mind but essentially we have a sleeve kind of attached and we just need to finish the bottom section of it so flip the garment inside out so again the good sides are facing each other and we're just going to focus on that bottom line that begins at the bottom of the armhole down to the outer edge of the sleeve sew this in place and then trim off any excess material for this bottom section as well as that gathered section of the armhole and then just go around and zigzag stitch or overlock these edges and that will just help create a nice clean finish Lastly, we're just going to now focus down the bottom of the sleeve and we're just going to create one single fold or hem. I did mine about half an inch or one centimeter. You can pin this in place or you can just jump right into sewing and sew entirely across this area. Then we're going to do a second fold and this one is going to be large enough for our elastic to fit in. So you can do what I did, where you do a first fold and just lay your elastic on top of it to make sure that it is the right width. Whatever the width of your elastic is, maybe add about a quarter of an inch or half an inch extra just so that you have enough seam allowance to be able to sew this section down pin this all in place and pop it on the machine sew entirely around this bottom hem section and then stop two inches or so from where we started and that's just going to allow an access hole for us to put the elastic into so grab your safety pin pop this on one end of the elastic and we're going to insert this through that hole that we left open begin to gather and push the elastic all the way through until it reaches back around to where it entered push it out there take your safety pin off and then just overlap that extra seam allowance that we created we'll then switch our machine to a zigzag set and just sew back and forth along this overlap section and that will help just secure the elastic in place maybe a little side note before you sew this elastic together maybe just go around and make sure that you haven't accidentally twisted the elastic because you know that can be very annoying and then you have permanently sewed it in place then you can pull this elastic so it is all hidden back within that hemmed edge and switch your machine back to a regular stitch and sew close that hole that we left open and then my friends you should have one sleeve all nice and done you'll just have to go back and repeat that process for the second sleeve now for the next step we just need to create the straps that are going to go around and tie this whole dress together measure your waist area and add about 10 inches this will allow it to have enough length to obviously go around our waist and then a bit of extra just to be able 
able to tie a knot as well. Once you've got that first measurement, we will then need to figure out the width of the strap. So personally, I would try and go for something not too thick for this, just because we are going to be creating a hole later on for it. Because my final width is going to be half an inch, I then double that to one inch, add an inch for seam allowance, and that means my cutting width is going to be two inches. So you can use that equation for any other width if you have a different number in mind. I then plotted out this key length and width for the straps and cut out two pieces. Next I just folded one of these good sides facing and sewed along one short edge and one long edge, then went along and trimmed off any excess material from the seam allowance. If you find that your material is one that particularly frays, I would recommend going and overlocking or zigzag stitching this as well. Then we'll grab our paintbrush or whatever long thin object you were able to locate and we'll pop this on the closed end of our strap and we'll begin to push this in through the strap so it reveals the good sides out the other end. Once we've done that with both straps we will then begin adding it onto the garment. So we're going to focus on on the underside of your garment and particularly the point where the angle and the side edge meets. And we're going to add the side straps onto each of these edges. So you'll notice that we have that existing sewing line from that hem that we have created. We're going to align the raw edge of the strap over the top of this, making sure that it doesn't hang off the edge of the actual garment. And then we're just going to sew along there so it sits kind of on top of that existing hemline. Then you'll see that I fold it over and then we're going to sew a second line, which is pretty much as close as we can get to the edge of the garment. Here you can see it in Action and hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. Essentially these two lines just help hide that raw edge and also help secure the strap onto the garment. So do that for both sides and then figure out which one of these front panels you want to be the one that sits on the bottom. So as you saw earlier one of mine has a straight edge which I am going to designate as my bottom edge. So I laid that down to the point where it sat kind of naturally and met the waist area on the opposing side where the strap has been added onto. And then just grabbed my fabric chalk and marked out the height and the placement of this strap on that side seam as we are going to unpick a little edge of this seam and that is where one of the straps is going to sneak through so it sits on the front side. So once you've figured out the height of that, grab your unpicker, unpick this area and then we'll just go back to where you can see that existing sewing line is from that seam. We're just going to do a back stitch above and below this hole just so this thread doesn't come undone any further. Then once you've done that, you can just thread your strap through and double check that it looks all good on the outside. Then once you're happy with all that, we are just up to the final step of hemming this bottom edge. So again, you might want to do one last final try on and just make sure that it is like sitting at your ideal length or figure out how much you need to hem it by to get it to your ideal length. You'll notice when I wear my dress that my front two edges actually have a different length and the one that sits on top sits a little bit lower. I gave it that effect on purpose because personally, again, just like that detail. So all I did was I just created a larger hem on the bottom edge. So obviously that one came up further. The other one, just sat where it normally would. Maybe once you have created that double hem and pinned it all in place, you can try it on and make any adjustments for how you would like it to sit. But essentially you should have a finished wrap dress all ready to go. So exciting. The beauty of this dress is I found that you can kind of wrap it a few different ways. So once you have put that designated one that goes kind of through the side seam, you can then wrap that around to one side, tie it up over there. You could even completely wrap the straps around your whole waist and then tie it up wherever that meets the other strap. Or you could move it all to the back and tie it around the back. So many different ways to tie it up and make it suit your body and style. Also, I find the tighter that you tie it, obviously it pulls it in around the waist more and also pulls across this area where it wraps over and the looser you wear it, obviously a little bit more spread out it is. You can adjust it to suit your body and style and however you want to wear it. Also, I know a lot of you, as I'm uploading this video, are going into colder months. I'm currently going into warmer months, so I will probably wear it as is, but I did recently come across a cold day and I laid it up with a shirt underneath and some pants underneath and a jacket and I passed the cold temperature test. So, you know, try and think outside the box how you can make a piece work across all the different seasons. Well, I hope you enjoyed following along the process of bringing this garment to life. I am so obsessed. I have worn it to like many many different occasions it does have the ability to dress up but i can wear it like just throughout the day as well the perfect in between essential to have in your wardrobe if you did like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe as i've got plenty more videos like this in the works and also if you do give it a go don't forget to tag me at the essentials club on instagram as i always love seeing your outcomes thanks so much for tuning in and i hope you have a lovely day wherever you are I'll see you guys in the upcoming videos